everyone, it's me, Marcy Lamberson, and today we're going to be making some feather beads. And these feather beads are a bead that I designed because I had so many uh, stringers. And I don't like wasting glass, and I wanted a way to use up a bunch of them and uh, still make a cool bead with them. So let me just show you what I do. I make a base bead with just about any color because you're going to be covering it with your stringers but I like to do one of the colors that's within it or a close color just in case there's an accident and something shows it's nice to have it look like it belongs I make the base bead and I flatten it a little bit and I like to use a 1 16th mandrel and then I wrap with stringers individual wraps or sometimes twice if I want more of a color and then um, it's, I flatten it a tiny bit, but not totally. And then I take a stringer and run it down through that after I warm up the side. And then that pulls the feathers so that you can see how they go in like that. And on an angle, uh, it's just kind of dragging the glass down to make it more feather-like. And then I uh, flatten it a tiny bit more sometimes. And then I'll take some shears or scissors and just cut little indents to give it more of a feathery type look. And sometimes I'll run that stringer down there too. But you can see it's a great way to play with color, to try out different colors together even, and just have a little bit of fun. So I have lots of feathers. Uh, let me show you this one also. This one has dichroic glass in it, and it's done a little bit differently because it's not in case stringer style. I had to do it a little differently. But anyhow, looking at these, you can kind of get an idea whether you prefer a feather that has a lot of contrast in it or whether it's more similar colors. So many to choose from. But today, we're going to be using a turquoise, a purple, a bit of yellow, and some blue for for today's bead. And uh, I'm just grabbing a piece of glass for the base. It really doesn't matter. Anyone is fine. And uh, I'll also be using, let's see, I told you shears, mashers, and sometimes I keep something sharp like the tip of my brass stump shaper or an old razor blade or something if I want to increase indentations. And I'm not sure why I have my pliers here. I'm going to put those away. I have a big magnetic bar over the top of it. So the other thing I'm not sure whether I emphasized enough is that I like to have my stringers encased. I like to encase them. Somebody doesn't encase them for me. And encasing is just wrapping a clear or a trans transparent color around your rod and pulling it out like a stringer. What that does, if you're not familiar with it, is that it creates an extra band of glass so that there's it stays more differentiated from the next color. Um, and then when you melt them, they don't run into each other that way. So it kind of gives you a little bit nicer look to it as far as I'm concerned. And I like using in case stringers a lot too. So I always have a lot of them. It's just kind of, I prefer that over the others in a lot of situations. So I'm going to use my minor torch, which you guys have seen in my other videos. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, I don't know whether you know this, but there's a little bell down on the corner near the subscribe thing. If you click on it, it will let you know when I have a new video that's come up. I think I've got quite a few now. I'm going to keep increasing the number. Okay, so I just have a blue here. It really doesn't matter. It was just one that was nearby that I grabbed. And I'm heating my mandrel. This is a 1 16th. Go ahead and use a 332nd if you're more comfortable with that. I like these because it makes my feathers even thinner. And sometimes people like to use them as little earrings and stuff. Some mismatched feathers um, make kind of fun earrings if you like asymmetrical. So what I'm going to do is make kind of like a 
bike cone, but not quite as fancy. And I'm just applying my glass to the mandrel. And usually what I do is I make kind of like a long tube first, and then I'll add to it. We're just getting the glass on. See how I apply my glass perpendicularly to the rod? And my glass is feeding through the flame to melt it. This is kind of giving me just my base length. And I think that looks plenty long to me. So let me give it a quick marver. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes things fall. I gotta be careful. I was rearranging stuff this morning and obviously I didn't rearrange it enough. Okay, so I have a tube and this is the marver that I use. It's a Kote marver, which is um, a Japanese brand one. And it's a lot similar to a trowel, as you can see, but it gives me a really wide berth to, to marver on. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we've got an approximate length. I want to add a little bit at the end for the feather stem or whatever that's called. It can't be too skinny or it will break off, right? So we've got to make it a little smaller than the tube, but it doesn't have to be a whole lot. We'll just add a little more glass on the tube. Okay, so let's add to the tube to make it a little bit larger. We're gonna start near the end. And we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm adding a couple of wraps as I go. And I can always add more if I want it to be a little wider. We're gonna press this and as you know, that will make it a little bit wider. Your glass breaking off will make it a little wider. <laughs> Not a big deal. This doesn't have to be perfect. We can both marver it or leave it a little bit asymmetrical. Doesn't really matter. And we're gonna be adding glass on top of it too. So nothing needs to be perfect because we're gonna be remarvering anyhow. I want it a little wider at one point, and I tend to be about two thirds of the way down is where I, I personally prefer to have it a little bit wider. Okay, so let's give it a little marver, and don't forget to keep that little skinny stem area warm also, or it'll get away from you. And we're gonna add glass over the top of that too, so that too doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm just marvering, and see it's kind of a modified bicone. You can make it any shape you like. Ovals are pretty. You can even do tubes. You can have it flare at the end, whatever you like. Okay, so we're gonna give this a little press, just a little. And see when I warm it up, it's got a nice glow to it, but it's not super hot. And we're gonna flatten it pretty well. See how that looks there? And even though it's got some chill marks, we're gonna be covering that. So you can take them off by just heating it or you can leave them on there. Now the next part I think is really fun because what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide if we want a pattern, if we want just a certain amount of something, if we want one color more prevalent than others. I know that I don't want my yellow to be prevalent. I want it to be a good accent though. I'm going to start with my purple and see how I'm just going around in a circle. Okay, there's one stripe and I want quite a bit of it. So I'm going to add some more down here. See how I'm leaving it raised. Let's add some more because I like purple. And it's one of the deeper colors, the purple and the blue but I really like turquoise too. So we're just gonna put it down in case we're ready for it some more. And I know I want some yellow for an accent. And I pulled this one a little bit thinner. This one has a curve right there. You can get rid of that curve right on the end. We're gonna keep this little feather bead warm and we're gonna add a little bit of yellow towards the top. See how I'm placing it right next to the purple? And let's add a little bit at the bottom. We don't want too much of this. 
We just want it to be a nice little accent. Oh, and I love aqua. It's probably my favorite color out of all of them. So let's put some aqua next to the yellow because I, I always like those colors together. And I like lots of aqua. Of course, we're going to keep all of this warm. So I'm going to add one more next to it. We're going to do double rows of aqua. And how about a double row of aqua here? Really, you can do anything you want. You can do it all one color with just another color as an accent. You can, you, you, you got options there. Use them. And what's fun is, for me at least, this gets to be a little bit addictive because then I think, oh, well, what happens if I use this stringer or this stringer? And I find that I, I also enjoy uh, doing it with neutral colors too, or maybe just a touch of a color with a bunch of neutrals. Okay, so towards the top, I generally do one color and I tend to keep enough of that color so that I can add some more if I need it. I like to bring my feather up a little bit higher at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna put some more of this blue down here. One circle and they connect and then I'll do another one next to it. I like to have a little bit of contrast. We're going to do blue down on the bottom of the feather. I used to know the names of these parts of the feather and it's kind of left my mind. So I've got a space there. Do I want another yellow? Do I want another purple? Do I want a piece of aqua there? If in doubt, for me, add aqua. Oh yeah. So right down the middle, we're filling that spot. Now, if you wanted some of the base, you could even put a, a clear stringer down there and reserve that. Here's a tiny bit of room and when you press it it takes up most of the room so you don't have to fill every space a hundred percent but I tend to like to okay so we've got the basic feather right there kind of cool like that isn't it okay we're gonna heat it up a little bit on each side but first we're gonna do one side at a time and I'm debating do I want this for the color going down do I want this if I'm going to put something down the middle? I think I like the blue that matches the end there. So I'm going to thin this out just a little bit because I'm going to be dragging the glass with it. I want it a little bit sharper, but not too sharp. So now I'm going to heat the glass and see how it's kind of straight on, like at a 90 degree angle. I'm not melting it 100%, but I'm getting it nice and warm so I can drag it down. I'm going to drag it over the end of the feather also. Okay, see the color, that glow? Then I'm going to start pulling with the end. And that is pulling the rest of the glass down. If you don't get it all and it's gotten too cool, then you go back and heat it up. You just stop and start again. Okay, here we go. Let's drag a little more. And I go down right over that very base because I think it looks pretty like that. Okay, see how it pulled the feather down? We'll work with that in a minute. Let's do the other side first. So we're heating up the other side. I still have a little bit of a point on this glass, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm getting it a nice rosy glow and right down the center I'm pulling making sure that I'm dragging that glass down to the bottom over the little bit. It's kind of pretty. Okay, so next what I can do is if it's sticking out a little too much or I don't like something, it's a great time to warm it, not super hot, and just give it a little press. Get it where you want it. And I want to make my feather come up a little bit at the top and see I did two rows up there so I had a little base and easy to add a little more and I'm just going to add an extra little dot up there. See how it's kind of raised a little bit and then what I do is I just take a tool, 
heat it up underneath, heat that glass underneath, and I'm not going to touch the mandrel. I'm just going to take it and push it out, and I'm watching from the side to make sure it's not touching the mandrel, but I'm flattening it a little bit. And see how we get a little bit of a, a point on the end of the feather? That's cool, isn't it? Okay, and before we get too far, let's add the little line that goes down. So I'm warming up this glass and my feather, and I'm going to go right down that little narrow pathway that we made when we were dragging it. Ta-da! See, it's got just that little indent. We're going to do the same on this side. We're going to add the little dot at the top. Just a little extra. It's just like a, a small dot, really. And I press down to give it a little bit more of an end of a feather. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Give it a little bit of warmth. We've got to keep our bead warm. And then I'm just going to go right down the center with my glass. Boom, 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 boom. And it's down. So we've got that. Okay, so now we're at the point of we get to do some cutting in a good way. So what I need to decide is, am I okay with this being a little uneven like this, because I'm going to be cutting, or if I want to smooth it, I could take the heat and just run it around the edge and give it a few little taps to get it closer to a similar shape. Doesn't matter to me. I kind of like the unevenness, and sometimes I'll go in with a sharp edge and just push it a little bit also to add a little bit more difference. But... Um, We'll leave it like this, just so you can see. Next, what I'm going to do is take my shears, and any scissors will work for the most part. I tried children's baby scissors, those did not work, but my kitchen shears worked really well, and I had some, oh, some nail scissors that were real sharp ones. Those worked. I, I can use a lot of different ones. It's all in the heat of your glass. And what I'm going to do is just make a couple little snips on each side to give it more of a feather look. So on one side only, I'm warming it up, and then I'm just taking my shears and giving it a little snip, not a whole lot. So it helps indent a little bit, and it gives you this part. You can see a little bit of difference there. The thing is, that can be very sharp, so I'll go underneath and heat it just a tiny bit, so it's not too sharp on somebody that's wearing it or owning it. So I'm going back and heating it up. See, there's a nice glow to it. And I'm just going to go back, and I'm snipping on a little bit of an angle. Whoop, little snip. Heat the point, and then I tend to do one more. Just, And I'm just along the edge. I'm not going way in. I'm just taking a little bit and snipping. If you reheat it too much, it's going to come together. It's going to ball up, whatever something you might not want so you can always take one of your stringers that match and just pull it back out if it goes in too far let's do the other side this goes fast i try not to match it exactly i like a little bit of difference and sometimes i'll be very careful and go along the lines of the colors this time i'm not being quite so careful but you can i did just above the yellow We'll add one more. Sometimes I do two on one side and one on another. Do just a tiny bit at the top. And there, my friends, we now have a feather. And I hope you have lots of fun making a feather also. I think it's a ton of fun. And you can use up some of your stringers too. Don't forget, encased is best so you can see the color lines the easiest. I'm Marcy Lamberson. Don't forget to subscribe and watch my other videos here on YouTube. Thanks. Bye.